here for today. My name is Marlon Lenoza. I would love to introduce the rest of our panelists. Right here is Auntie Joy Buklarahi. Bukl awesome name. Uh, next to her is Nathaniel Golfon, and next to him is David Fuentes. Uh, now, before we start, let's have a word of prayer. Auntie Joy, can yes, you sure. pray for us? Let's pray. Our most gracious and kind Heavenly Father, we're so thankful, dear Lord, that you have brought us here together to learn deeply about your word and the truth. And thank you for um, being with us throughout the week. And now it's our time to celebrate with you and learn more about you. And we pray for everyone who's here today, that who's listening, that you will guide us and give us your Holy Spirit to help us understand the truths that you want us to understand that we could apply it in our daily lives. Thank you for each panelist that are here, that you also give them the wisdom that we need so that we will be able to deliver accordingly to what you want us to deliver to everyone here today. Thank you so much and help us through this blessed Sabbath. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. All right, our lesson is entitled The Great Controversy and today's lesson is lesson number four is called Standing for the Truth. So before we go into our lesson, there's some context that are, need to be brought up to the lesson. As previous lessons before, there was a war that broke out into heaven and mm -hmm. Lucifer challenged God, right? That he could be better than God. And so he took one third of the angels and unfortunately from previous studies, we learned that earth was joined rebellion and disobeyed the commandments of God. And then we also see according to history, the great controversy or also the great cosmic conflict lives in our world. And so we will look in the lives of God's children or God's followers of God. So let's go over our first section, which is called Persecution Prophesied. So today we'll be going, we'll be going to first look at some writings from Daniel. And here we will see Daniel receives a vision and prophecies from God. And Nathaniel, can you, let's see what he says in Daniel 7, verse 23 through 25. Can you read that for us? Thus he said, The fourth beast shall be a fourth kingdom on earth, which shall be different from all other kingdoms, and shall devour the whole earth, trample it, and break it in pieces. Then the ten horns are ten kings who shall rise from this kingdom, and another shall rise after them. He shall be different from the first ones, and shall subdue three kings, and shall speak pompous words against the Most High and shall persecute the saints of the Most High, and shall intend to change the times and law. The saints shall be given into his hand for the time and times and half a time. Okay, wow, there seems like there's a lot of stuff mm -hmm. in this verse, right? Beasts, kings, there's probably lots of signs. Mm -hmm. But people who are hearing out there, or who are hearing for the first time, maybe are wondering, what does this all mean? So we'll break it down just a little bit. So if there is... I want to ask the panel, if there's four beasts, right, that means there was what before it? Three previous. Yeah, so yeah. there was three previous beasts. Mm -hmm. And so the beasts are considered as kingdoms. So if you study earlier in Daniel, whenever you have the time, we recognize that the first beast was a kingdom called, it was Babylon, Babylon. right? Yeah, it was Babylon. Babylon. And then the second beast is Medo-Persia. Medo -Persia. Medo -Persia. And then the third beast was Greece. 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 So now we're in the fourth beast. So in order to, so these are the order of beasts that they appear in, which they are also the order that they were conquered in. So we see in this verse the fourth beast, and he represents Rome, right? So in this verse, we see the beast has, what, horns. And do you know what the horns sort of represent here? Uh, the horns represent kings. Yes, that's right. And we see how many horns are there. Right. There's ten. ten horns. Right. So then out of these ten horns, so out of these ten kings, there's this little horn that sprouts out, right? Mm -hmm. So in Daniel 7, 23 to 25, who is this little horn that grew up in the fourth beast that persecutes the saints of the Most High? Well, if you consider, like, the history, since we went in, like, a certain pattern from Babylon, the Middle Persians, and after that, the one before the little horn would be Rome. Mm -hmm. And as some of you may or may not know, Rome was first divided into two subdivisions. Mm -hmm. But then it was divided later on into the Holy Roman Empire, mm -hmm. into many little kingdoms here and there. Yeah. So this little horn that sprouts out, right, amongst the ten, um, what does it really do? It speaks pompous words, right? It, against the Most High. So it's 
like what it wants to be or claims to have God's yeah. authority, right? Yeah. yeah. So, what are some examples of this little horn that uh, we see that we said it was from Rome, right? Um, what are some examples from history of persecution by this little horn power? Do you guys know? I mean, well, the little horn, are we talking about by the time it becomes the Holy Roman Empire for Rome? Yeah, we or can. predating that? Um, before when it was just... Yeah, do you know any... We could, we well, could both. for some examples, if we choose before the Holy Roman Empire, mm -hmm. when it was still a pagan nation, uh, Emperor Nero, um, oftentimes he would feed Christians to the lions and the gladiator mm -hmm. games, and another way he'd mock the Christians and persecute them, they would say, um, uh, we are the light of the world. So he'd, sadly, during his parties, these lavish parties he'd throw, he'd light Christians on fire as torches, Mm. Um, and set them up on display, and he'd say, "You're the light of the world," you know. So wow! Oh my goodness, that's really some examples. Yeah, you know. that's really messed up. I mean, that's that's really a sad part of history because the Roman, I guess, were were also part of a church, right? They were also sort of like a church as well. So him saying that is sort of, I don't know, it's really skewing up what God really says when He yeah, says the light of the world, mocking you know? the word of God. Yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, do you know any other examples that you know what they would do? I mean, persecution was really bad, right? Lighting people on fire. Yeah, the children, they offer them as sacrifices, mm. too. Yeah, so again, we, even though like these things are really terrible, right? I mean, even the church who are representing as God, uh, represent God, is going against what God says, you know? So it's important to understand that God will still sustain his people, even though those, tri uh, those trials and those t hard times are happening. So, in Revelation 12, verse 6 to 14, we'll just reference it, but even though all these things are happening, who's really the mastermind, the evil mastermind behind all of these? Do you guys know? Yeah, that's, of course, Satan. Mm -hmm. He was the one who started that in the first place in heaven. Yeah, exactly. And now, he just wanted to destroy those that are trying to you know, reveal the truth and yeah. God's followers. Uh, so. Do you guys happen to know which verse it is? I forgot, but it says we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but principalities, principalities. Mm -hmm. and all that. Um, uh, yeah, and that reminds us uh, who the enemy is. It's not our own brothers and sisters, but rather... Uh, Spiritual war. Yeah, demons. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah, amen. And so we we see this from Daniel, and he references even like ye, like years in the future. We also see Jesus also prophesy something about uh, his followers and what they experience through experience per, through persecution, and everything. The David, could you read John sixteen verse one through four through us? Let's see what Jesus says here. Yes, absolutely. Jesus warns and comforts his disciples. These things I have spoken to you, that you should not be made to stumble. They will put you out of the synagogues. Yes, the time is coming that whoever kills you will think that he offers God service. And these things they will do to you because they have not known the Father nor me. But these things I have told you, that when the time comes, you may remember that I told you of them. And these things I did not say to you at the beginning because I was with you. Mm. So with this verse that we just read, what prophecy did Jesus give about the persecution of his followers? Well, these things are going to be happening. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and no, as I say, uh, they will cast you or they will put you put out of synagogues. synagogues. And, and that's an interesting thing because when you really think about it, if you're someone that is attending a synagogue daily ever since you were a kid, and suddenly you follow... Jesus, right? You follow yeah. his faith because you've seen what he can do. Or maybe you just heard of him. But you truly want to follow his word, his ways. And suddenly he says, well, unfortunately that place that you have been attending his whole life, they will reject you because of me. And I imagine that maybe for some they didn't accept that. Others they did. But inherently it was still hard for them to come to realize to that reality. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. I mean, like, we're, we're looking at the time where Jesus was alive and, and, and on earth, and you see that I don't think the church even accepts what he, what he teaches, what he preaches here, and he even warns 
his disciples that what like whoever killed or that that the time is coming and whoever kills you will think that he offers you know something else and not not from God but um, we see here that Jesus says to his disciples that this time will be coming right mm -hmm. and um, it's 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 good that he warns us because if he if he didn't warn us it will be like yeah. he didn't really care for us you know yeah if you give a warning you would um, it's it's like a you know like if you, didn't, if you don't care for someone and you know something bad is going to happen, yeah. right, would mm -hmm. you give a warning? No, but you yeah. would give a warning if you do care for them. Yeah, and this warning we see it echoes throughout all of history. Uh, not only when Jesus' disciples got persecuted mm -hmm. after Jesus' death, but even throughout a lot of history, a lot of Sabbath keepers were persecuted, and there's even more persecution to come in the future, mm -hmm. as we believe yeah. as Christians. And, and I see here that even people like persecute because they think they're doing God's mm -hmm. work. Mm -hmm. But then the problem is they, they don't know the Father. They don't know God. Yeah. So they think those are things that, you know, will please whoever they believe. But that they didn't guided. believe the right person, which is yeah. God. Yeah, you know? yeah. So they think it's just God's service that they're doing. Yeah, mm -hmm. they don't know God. They don't know his scriptures. Because mm -hmm. the scripture says, you know, to, mm -hmm. not, to not kill or, you know what I mean? But... Yes. It also says in the scriptures that even though that these things will happen, God is still with us. You know, as it says here, at all these things, I, I did not say, that you, say to you at the beginning because I was with you. So that even though that you may be persecuted, even though you might be going through these trials, that he is still with us. And that's very comforting, mm -hmm. right? That he's able to give us this message today, um, even for people who are out there right now. So... Let's move on. Let's see what other pro uh, what other promises Jesus made uh, for those people in during that time, uh, or to his followers. Uh, Auntie Joy, can you please read Revelation two, uh, verse ten? Let's yes, see what that says. in the New King James version, it says, "Do not fear any of those things which you are about to suffer. Indeed, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison, that you may be tested." and you will have tribulation ten days. Be faithful until death, and I will give you the crown of life. Mm. So what promise so, yeah, shows here? it's beautiful. I give you a crown of life in spite of all what you're going to be going through, mm -hmm. like prison, you know, you're going to be, you know, have a lot of tribulations for the sake of Christ, but then there's the crown of life that he promised. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I want to break down the verse, be faithful until death, wow. and I will give you a crown of life. So even though that even if you die, yes. what will happen? What will happen? You will have eternal life. Yeah, exactly. Yes. So he, you can see that he's really with us throughout the whole time, even after death. Yeah. So. And what I also like about that verse too, if I could add, um, yes. Jesus reminds us, uh, you know, uh, do not fear any of those things which you are about to suffer. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, it's almost saying like it's okay that it's coming because that's mm -hmm. not going to matter in the grand scheme of things. Mm -hmm. You know, um, the reward is worth so much more. Yeah, uh, exactly. Powerful. Um, yeah. So, moving on. Thank you for that. Do you think there's any stories? Maybe share a time or a story where someone you know that has experienced persecution as a follower of Jesus. Do you guys know any stories? Um, I remember uh, listening to Pastor uh, Pavel Goya. I don't know if you know him. Mm -hmm. He is a minister in our church, and he grew up in Romania. He was mm -hmm. born there, and you know, Romania is a communist country, mm -hmm. and he tells us stories about his grandfather trying to preach the gospel in the streets, and then the, the, the policemen try to go hit him and, you know, just beat him up. Mm -hmm. But he still goes and goes and you know, he died at what, age 102? Wow. Yes, but he was able to share a lot and was able to deliver a lot, but then he was not scared of being beaten up in the streets, mm. you know, growing up and uh, it's very teaching. Noble. And, yes, that was noble. I think it's because he values what God has valued. God mm -hmm. values us more than anything else, and he probably got that message that if God values us and he died on the cross, he himself would probably value the truth and give it to everyone just to let them know that God values them too. Mm -hmm. You know, in spite of 
whatever happens in the street that he has a lot of experiences as well as you know pastor i don't know if you can uh, listen to his story but mm. he has a lot of beautiful uh, testimonies about how um he uh he go through a lot of persecution but then god has um restored really him. restored him yeah. and blessed him and he is able to tell the world about the great truth. Yeah, amen, amen. You know, so speaking of, you mentioned value. It reminded me of this story a long time ago that um, this, patch, this pastor was preaching how he contacted some people in China. Mm. And these Chinese people were telling their story of how they had to smuggle Bibles into the country because, you know, mm. uh, religious freedom is not a luxury that they have. Yeah, over there, yeah. Yeah, so they were mentioning, and uh, well, he was continuing the story of how he managed to contact them, pray for them, and all that. But the part that intrigued me and also intrigued him was that uh, some of their members were talking to him, and they're like, oh, I wish that someday, like in America, we, we can, someday we can read our, our Bibles without fear and persecution. And the pastor really thought about it, and he's like, you know, I hope you don't. And, and, and the Chinese people were like, what do you mean you don't? You not want us to spread the word? And it's like, no, you guys don't understand. It's because where, where I'm from, I don't see the dedication that you guys have. Mm. You guys are, are willing to hide the Bible. You, 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 like, there's not even some videos, like they're kissing the Bible. They're like, mm. they're just so happy, it's they're precious. crying. They're yeah. precious to them. And, and like, you guys like read the Bible every day. You guys learn it every day. You guys even, uh, even under the worship circumstances, you guys still cherish the truth. You guys are willing to go to lengths that most people will not. And at home, most people will leave their Bible sitting on a shelf, right, accumulating yeah. dust. Yeah, they wow. would even memorize the Bibles, right? Yeah, yeah. Right. like a lot of the scriptural, and uh, you know, so yeah, it's amazing that. Uh, even though that they're going through that time, the Chinese people who are going through that time, God is still with them, and God is even still with them even after that. And so, yeah, thank you guys for wonderful stories. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's crazy to uh, think that that's going on in the world to even today. Right. If it happened in the world back then, how much more is it now, right now? Yeah. So. And um, remember the story in the Great Controversy. Mm -hmm. It's a very popular book. You know. Mm -hmm. Millions of people have like read that, but there's a story about the Waldenses. Mm. Remember how they value the truth in spite of this. They have to, you know, that's why we're here as Christians right now. We're here to be able to read the Bible because they kept it in their hearts. Mm. In spite of what happened before, they have to go to the mountains mm. and hide there. But then they kept this word of God and the truth in their hearts so that they will be able to um, impart it to us yeah exactly oh, yeah. so i think it's in the chapter uh 61 of the great controversy mm. it's mm -hmm. a beautiful story if you could read that one yeah of course the Waldenses. And you said it's the Wal Wallaces? Waldenses. 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 Yes. Waldenses. Okay. Waldenses, yeah. yes yeah. they were persecuted them. yeah they run through the mountains but then they came back and even if they're being you know persecuted they still hide the word of God in their heart and mm -hmm. they make sure that they memorize it and pass it to the next generation. And that's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Amen. And you really see Jesus really working with these people, Waldenses, the Chinese people. And so let's see, uh, let's move on to our next section. So this part we saw, the previous part we just saw, we saw Daniel and Jesus uh, said that there was going to be persecution. Uh, they said it through prophecy. And now this part is entitled Apostasy Prophesied. So we see that apostasy is going to go into the church. And if you guys know, do you guys know what apostasy mean? I, I know I remember heard this. It's like abandonment. Yeah. It's like, uh, like an act of refusing to follow uh, religious faith or something like that, right? So we'll see apostasy being prophesied in scripture. Um, Nathaniel, could you read Jude 1 through 4? Of course. Let's see what it says. Jude, a bondservant of Jesus Christ and a brother of James. To those who called sanctified by God the Father and preserved in Jesus Christ, mercy, peace, and love to be multiplied to you. Beloved, 
While I was very diligent to write you concerning common salvation, I found it necessary to write to you, exhorting to you to contend earnestly for the faith which was once for all delivered to the saints. For certain men have crept in unnoticed, who long ago were marked out for this condemnation, ungodly men, who turned the grace of our God into lewdness and denied the only Lord and God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Mm. So we see in Jude 1 and through, through 4, why did Jude encourage Christians to contend earnestly for faith which was once for all delivered to the saints? Maybe um, this was a maybe like a warning or something like that, yeah. or because like in the verse it says here, right? For certain men have crept in unnoticed. So as we mentioned about apostasy, mm -hmm. that is probably crept in. Maybe not like like subtly. Like a, yeah, subtly. it's suddenly. Yeah, yeah. subtle. Yes. So you can see that Jude prophesies these false teachings. Um, will come into the church, right? And they did with uh, the Holy Roman Empire. Yeah. They started yeah, exactly. mixing all the pagan beliefs that were never present. Mm -hmm. Those practices were never present in Christianity beforehand. Yeah, exactly. Not uh, with the Jewish teachings, not with Jesus' teachings. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, talking about the Roman Empire, uh, let's see what Daniel says about this little horn. Uh, in Daniel 7 through 25, David, could you please read that for us? Yes. He shall speak pompous words against the Most High, shall persecute the saints of the Most High, and shall intend to change times and law. Then the saints shall be given into his hand for a time and times and half a time. All right, Auntie Joy, and if you could read Daniel 8, verse 9 to 12. Yes, and out of one of them came a little horn, which grew exceedingly great toward the south, toward the east, and toward the glorious land. And it grew up to the host of heaven, and it cast down some of the host and some of the stars to the ground and trampled them. He even exalted himself as high as the prince of the host, and by him the daily sacrifices were taken away, and the place of his sanctuary was cast down. Because of transgression, an army was given over to the horn to oppose the daily sacrifices, and he cast truth down to the ground. He did all this and prospered. Yeah, thank you for that. Thank you, guys. So, as we mentioned, the papal Rome, right? Um, they put in apostasy in the church. And so, what do you think some other ungodly work in the Little Horn, which we noticed that it was the papal Rome, mm -hmm. seek to really accomplish here, especially in these two verses? Well... I wish to focus on the last verse, which says, Because of transgression, an army was given over the horn to pose the daily sacrifices. Mm -hmm. And he cast the truth down to the ground. And then all this, and he pro and prospered. Now, I think that when he says, cast truth down to the ground, mm -hmm. it's not only denying truth. It's replacing truth with a lie. It's making lie seem like a truth. Mm -hmm. Which is, as it said previously, it, um, Jude was trying to warn that certain changes or people are trying to crept in, uh, you know, the church. Mm -hmm. So I think it's uh, very important, like, to verify what we are learning exactly. Yeah. Because that, because you know, as many churches and many people will say, no, this is okay. Uh, yeah, God will forgive you anyways. It's fine to do it. Mm -hmm. Or some people will say no. It's fine. You're gonna to go to heaven anyways, or like, or they're gonna, you know, they're gonna distort their own truth according to what they think is better for them. Yes, yeah. you know, that that's like the main thing between the enemy and God. Like the enemy is like, well, why do I have to follow your rules? Mm -hmm. Why do I have to follow your truth? And I think that's something that uh, the enemy wants us to believe as well, which unfortunately we can see that in some cases. And in culture and in the church, he has been successful. Yeah. I wanted to piggyback off of that, like, through truth to the ground. It, you know, when I think of, like, throwing away truth, I sort of, like, like you know, like when you're throwing, like, trash. Not saying that the truth is trash, but mm -hmm. I'm just saying, like, when you're, like, take something that you don't want, and you're like, ah, okay. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not very respectful, you know, of what yeah. the teachings are, are there or presented to, you know. So, um, 
So I, I like what you said about that. With uh, if you remove the truth, then like there's any truth that could, or yeah. like what perceives as truth. You yeah, know what because I mean? if you don't stand for anything, you stand for nothing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, Marlon, if I could go off of what you were saying, um, the specific example that we see that horn, mm -hmm. um, the the papacy, uh, do is when you say he threw truth to the ground, the Bible specifically states that the Bible is truth, the word of God is truth. Mm. And what we see in Catholic doctrine, if you read Catholic doctrine, um, it specifically states that while the Bible is important, the word of the Catholic Church is to be held up above the Bible. Mm. It's very clear about that. That's why they can get away with certain things like keeping Sunday or praying to the dead and so on. And we see that it was successful um something else i'd like to yeah sure uh, point out um another thing that we need to focus on here in this verse it says because of transgression an army was given over to the horn to oppose the daily sacrifices mm. um so we see that he's given power he's given military might mm. um so he can enforce his blasphemous teachings and all that mm. yeah I definitely think, like, with that verse alone, what you mentioned, David, I think at this point, they recognize that church and state are now mixed together. Mm -hmm. Now, when that is mixed together, man, that power could be very strong, right? They could mm -hmm. uh, do whatever they want. They could perse persecute something. They're over the law. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, yeah, you see, like, this power, this little horn power is really working during that time, mm -hmm. as we mentioned, in, even in history. Um, is there any other ungodly work that the little horn power that's mentioned in these verses? Um, well, well, yeah. Uh, if one thing I notice here at the start of verse eleven, he even exalted, exalted himself, himself as the huh. as high as the prince of the host. Mm. So he's saying he's God. Yeah, exactly. Very, yeah. very bad. Yeah. So he wants also wants to receive worship as well. Mm -hmm. So he wants the power. He wants to worship. Mm -hmm. You know, he doesn't respect truth. I think another one thing, it also says here, daily sacrifices were taken away, right? So that means the sacrificial system that God has given us, do you know what it is? Is Christ giving his life for us, right? Mm -hmm. if, he, if that was taken away, so that means um, God's grace, you, you know, was nothing. That's what they, that's, that's what they believe. So, yeah. so when that was taken away, According to the papal Rome, you have to do what? You have to do something Work for that works. salvation. Oh, yes. Yeah. So maybe, like, you have to say this many hail marys or something, or you know, whatever that that may be. So mm -hmm. you see that yeah. the little horn uh, has more false ideas and more um, even extreme things like harming yourselves. I know that was popular. Some monks, really? some Catholic monks, would whip their back mm -hmm. in repentance. Yeah, and all that. like lashing. Yeah, mm -hmm. and they were considered more holy because they're willing to harm themselves even more than wow. others. So. Yeah. so there's a lot of false teachings here, but let's see even more what Paul says um, to the Christian church. Uh, let's see more prophecies. Nathaniel, could you please read Second Thessal Thessalonians 2, verse 1 through 4. Let's see what this says. Now, brethren, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together to Him, we ask you not to be soon shaken in mind or troubled, either by spirit or by word or by letter. As if from us, although the day of Christ had come, that no one deceive you by any means, for that day will not come unless the failing away comes first. And the man of sin is revealed, then the son of perdition, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he sits as God is in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Mm. So, in this verse, right, as Paul presented, what warning did Apostle Paul give about this great apostasy? Well, as you can see, which is pretty evident, it says, let no one deceive you by any means. Mm. Mm. And I'm pretty sure he was being very literal about that. Which, which is something that is very hard in this day. Because there is many groups especially with um, the internet. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying the internet is not a wonderful tool because the Lord has also used it 
Yeah, especially today. You know what I mean? We're yeah. using uh, <laughs> yeah. we're using online. Yeah. But as we as we can see, misinformation and um, not only misinformation but interpretations of what the truth is can become very hard when there's so many people telling you this is the way, no, this is path is not right, no, this road is not the one you're supposed to follow. Mm -hmm. So, of course, this can not only go to that, it can only be deceived by people, by friends, family, and some of them don't even know about it. Mm -hmm. So you just have to keep a lookout, which, yeah. which is, uh, it is hard, especially for those who truly don't know where to go. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And then it also says people will fall away and there are also people who are who exalt themselves as God. So it's it's uh it's happening mm -hmm. even during that time and people think about that even today. Yeah. So moving on, let's see what other false doctrines were promoted. What what do you think some other false doctrines that were promoted during this great apostasy that were directly contrary to the clear teaching of God's word? Is there any other times that I think uh, we mentioned about the little horn? What what, what other times that false doctrines? I think. Uh, well, one that was very popular is then you could pay to go into heaven, mm -hmm. or you could pay to be repented. Yeah. Which it clearly contradicts what God, you know, was doing because mm -hmm. He already sacrificed. Like, what, what's the point of you of God coming to earth yeah. and then sacrificing? Later on, the church is going to be like, no, well, the sacrifice wasn't valid. You know, card declined. Yeah. So now, now you have to pay us, yeah. the real church, to mm -hmm. go to heaven. Yeah. When Jesus was clearly dictating, no, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Yeah. Or you, even have, or you could even pay someone else yeah. that they could go, like, when they die, they're held into, like, a purgatory or something like yeah. that. And in order for them to go to heaven, you have to pay. I'm like, yeah. Even the Bible states clearly that no one could uh, pay themselves or pay out of themselves out of heaven or out of hell, yeah. you know? So um, even maybe like Ten Commandments were probably broken too. Uh, maybe like yeah. worshiping idols mm -hmm. or keeping the Sabbath. I think those are some other yeah. examples, right? But The worship of Mary. Yeah, all that. something like that. But um, good thing that our lesson does not end there. <laughs> you know what I mean? I know we're talking about lost, a lot of false doctrines and everything, and it might like encourage, uh, discourage people, but good thing that even though these persecutions or even though these false doctrines or these apostasies are happening, um, God is still with us, right? And we could still stand by the truth. So this next section of uh, this lesson is called Standing Firm for the Truth as followers of Jesus. So let's see how we can still stand firm even amongst all these problems and all these stresses. Uh, David, let's see in Acts 5, could you read Acts 5, verse 12 through 18? Let's see what this says. And through the hands of the apostles, many signs and wonders were done among the people, and they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. Yet none of the rest dared to join them, but the people esteemed them highly, and believers were increasingly added to the Lord, multitudes of both men and women, so that they were brought, so that they brought the sick out into the streets and laid them on beds and couches, that at least the shadow of Peter passing by might fall on some of them. Also, a multitude gathered from the surrounding cities to Jerusalem, bringing back sick people and those who were tormented by unclean spirits, and they were healed. Mm -hmm. Imprisoned and apostles freed. Then the high priest rose up, and all those who were with him, which is the sect of the Sadducees, and they were filled with indignation, and laid their hands on the apostles and put them in the common prison. Okay, so we see this story here. Um, we see that Luke, who's the writer of Acts, he writes about that these people, or the apostles, were pretty much doing pretty good things, right? Signs and wonders. And so... And healing people. So how do you think the Jewish high priests and the Sadducees treat the apostles who are serving Jesus with holy boldness? We see that it was not a good. <laughs> they did not treat him well. How do they treat him well? Uh, treat him. Well, it was clearly that as previously, as with Jesus, they were not happy with what they were seeing. Mm -hmm. And of course, well, they put him into prison. Yeah. 
So it's kind of interesting that you see something that's good, right? Like you see them healing people. Mm -hmm. I don't think the first thing that you would do is just put them into prison. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, if they're doing something good, why stop them? So let's see more what we could see in Acts 5. Let's see, I think it's it breaks down more of what's going on in this story. Acts 5, verse 19 through 33. Auntie Joy, if you could read that for us. All right. Um, the Son of Man will judge the nations. But at night, an angel of the Lord opened the prison doors and brought them out and said, Go, stand in the temple and speak to the people all the words of this life. And when they heard that, they entered the temple early in the morning and taught. But the high priest and those with him came and called the council together. And with all the elders of the children of Israel and sent to the prison to have them brought. Wow. Mm -hmm. um, where in verse 22, there's this apostles on trial again. But when the officers came and did not find them in the prison, they returned and reported, saying, Indeed, we found the prison shut securely and the guards standing outside before the doors. But when we opened them, we found no one inside. Mm. And now, when the high priests, the captain of the temple and the chief priests heard these things, they wondered what the outcome would be. So one came and told them, saying, Look, the men whom you put in prison are standing in a temple and teaching the people. Then the captain went with the officers and brought them without violence, for they fear the people, lest they should be stoned. And when they had brought them, they set them before the council. And the high priest asked them, saying, Did we not strictly command you to know, uh, not to teach in the name, in his name? And look, you have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine and intend to bring this man blood mm. on us. This man's blood on us. Oh my, they were not happy about that. <laughs> but Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than man. Mm. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom you mur murdered by hanging on a tree. Him God was exalted to his right hand to be prince and savior, to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are his witnesses to these things. And so also is the Holy Spirit whom God has given to you, to those who obey him. Wow. Wow. And Gamaliel's advice was when they heard this, they and were furious and, and plotted to, to kill, kill them. them. Yeah. So, man, we see this story. We, we see that they were healing and then they got in prison and then they got out of prison and then people were... You know, by the age of the Lord. And so, how did the Lord show his affirmation of the apostles that, and what was Peter's inspired testimony to religious leaders who were persecuted, the apostles? Well, first of all, as we can see that it's a true testament that, uh, first of all, if I were someone in the crowd and I just see my preacher the prison and suddenly he just back out. Mm -hmm. You know, I know he, he was supposed to be in there. There's no humanly way possible for him to get out. I think that would be like a testimony itself. Mm -hmm. And second of all, this this is a very interesting story because it always shows that God is, well, even though the word is God, he's like God, it should be like obvious that he can do anything. But sometimes it's, it's amazing how God can operate because yeah. there's just nothing can stand in God's way. Mm -hmm. Amen. If God wills it, then that's it. And as you can see, like even the people were like, well, they didn't want to arrest them because they were fearful that the people were going to turn on them. That's, and, and that's a interesting thing because that's another reason why many of these leaders, all these Pharisees, all these people in power were like against Jesus because if Jesus is the truth and the way and the life and these people suddenly start following them, then what ruling power could, what system will you have to control them? You wouldn't. Yeah, exactly. Because they're following someone else. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, no man rules alone. So you can't have a kingdom without people. Yeah. So, so as you can see, God is at the end the ultimate uh, ruler in this case. Yeah, and even for the apostles, God was able to still restore them to even still preach to the people who, who were yearnestly wanting the truth. Yeah. Yeah. So we could skip over 
uh, to Acts 5 verse 41. Uh, let's see what's the response. Even though all these things happen, um, what do you think was the response that imprisoned, uh, after they were imprisoned? Uh, David, let's read Acts 5 verse 41 through 42. So they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. And daily in the temple, in every house, they did not cease teaching and preaching Jesus as the Christ. Mm. So the response of the apostles were good, right? They were mm -hmm. rejoiced. They were in rejoice that the Lord saved them and uh, worthy that, you know, God yeah. is worried that he was able to go through those things. Mm -hmm. So... What are, with this whole story, what do you think some are, are some important lessons that we could learn from the experience and the testimonies from these apostles? Uh, one key thing I take away from this, mm -hmm. um, it says they rejoiced that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. Um, who would rejoice um, to suffer shame? Well, what we see here is a, a sense of healthy rebellion placed in the proper area mm -hmm. that we see uh, that we see the teachings of Christ had. There was a lot of darkness in the world during that time and the disciples truly believed that they were the light of the world, that if they teach the word of God they can shed light on all this darkness. And what it shows is that even through all the persecution they were rejoicing in that. Because oftentimes we we want that comfy life. We don't want to face persecution. Mm -hmm. um, it hurts. But what I love about seeing that they're rejoicing in that, it goes to show that while comfort's nice, mm -hmm. a mission, a sense of duty is mm -hmm. so much more. Mm -hmm. um, more duty. Yeah, and you, you see this throughout history and other situations too. People gladly dying in battle to protect those they mm -hmm. love and so on. And I think that sense of fight, that sense of spirit is very important, um, something we should adopt today. Yeah. Um, that's one lesson I take away. Mm. Yeah, amen. That. Like, when you really stand by the truth, you really see, um, and when you're in harmony with God's word, it really attracts, you know, people. Uh, it's even, beautiful. Even, yeah. I mean, even the evil one mm -hmm. is attracted to it because it's not, it's on, it's not on his focus. So, yeah. like what you said, um, stand, when you stand by the truth and when you're in harmony with God and when you, are, when you have that um, will, God's yeah. will to do things, you know, nothing can stand yeah. in God's way. So, yeah. right. God is always with you. So. Amen. Yeah. Yes. Is there any other important lessons that you could uh, really drive from this story? Well, considering everything we've read so far, if you think about it, there's a lot of people that are always wondering how, what is the true way? Mm -hmm. What's the path that I must choose to go to heaven? I think something we can take from this is that all of this, and we also question, you know, how, how can these people suffer, as David was saying? How, how can these people go through all these situations, these hardships, and they still continue on? And yes, the truth is a great part of it, because the truth will set you free. But I think another part of it is that if you love God, if you have that relationship with Him, one of understanding and comprehension, there is no limitation to where God can take you and where you will go for God. Because sometimes a lot of people, they try to, or think, that the way of repenting is by doing good deeds. And that's not the case. You do good deeds because it's a byproduct of you following God. Mm -hmm. It's you having that relationship with Him. Mm -hmm. Because you cannot have a foundation of good acts if you're trying to build a foundation based on just good acts. Because God, God is the foundation in the end. So once you have that foundation, no, it doesn't mean you're set. Because there will be, you know, you're human, you're, you're bound to fail. But once you have that relationship, it will be very hard for the enemy to get to you. In yeah. spite of whatever situation you may encounter. Uh, when you said, uh, like, foundation, it reminds me of, like, 
you know the house was built on the rock versus mm. the house built <laughs> on the sand. You know, when you have the rock, meaning that <clears throat> the house was built on the rock, meaning that when you have God or Christ as your foundation, as your roots, mm. as your truth, whatever storm may come, <clears throat> excuse me, whatever storm may come, it doesn't matter that yeah. you will still stand strong, stand firm for the truth. Auntie, Auntie Joy, do you have something about this lesson as well? Yes. Um, you know how if we value and we believe that God has really sacrificed for us because He highly values us mm -hmm. and we highly value His sacrifice to us, then, then only can we, we put the effort, we put you know, our lives into the stake. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah. We're not scared of because... This is a relational, you know, thing with you and God. Mm -hmm. And we just want to value what He has done to us. And yeah. this can just, you know, make us go forward without fear mm -hmm. of what's going to happen to us, even if, you know, just like what you said, the rock. We're going to be like strong as a rock because He is our rock, our foundation that mm -hmm. keeps us, you know, that we believe that he is with us all the time, and we're working together side by side with Him. And yeah, valuing yeah. what He has highly valued. Yeah, us. amen. I like what you said about uh, Christ's sacrifice, that if, if He had gone through that, if He had gone through all those persecution and all mm. that, um, like, what more compared to us, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. We, could, we could definitely experience those same, th same things as well. But... Even though the, that time will come, who knows that will be, yes. you know. Like what you said, as of what we all said today, that mm -hmm. it doesn't matter because Christ is our foundation. Christ mm -hmm. is our truth. Yes. And so, um, I think also one other thing. Uh, actually, let's move on. Do you know any other faithful followers of Jesus during the Christian era who had courage had the courage to stand firm for the truth in the face of persecution. Do you know any Remember names? Remember Stephen? Like, Stephen? Yeah, uh, Stephen. Yeah, yes. from the Bible, yes. Stephen. Yes. So he was stoned to death, but that mm -hmm. didn't, you know, make him weak enough in his faith, even to the point of death. Yeah. Yeah. That was a wonderful experience for him to see heaven while he was being stoned. Mm -hmm. And that's all that matters. For yeah, him. yeah, that was in reference to the previous lesson yes. that, you know, um, Stephen even said that, uh, be with them even while he's being killed. Mm. You know, it's, it's, it's hard to even think that way mm -hmm. when you're in such pain, when you're about to die and everything. So um, I think Stephen's a great example, Auntie Joy. Is there any other examples of faithful followers about this time? Um, are we talking specific to Bible times or just throughout we history? We can draw any at any time, even, even okay. your personal exp experiences. Well, uh, a moment I actually think in history that's very beautiful, uh, more recent than uh, the times of the disciples, is actually uh, around the time of the founding of our country. Um, our national anthem uh, is inspired by when a large naval British fleet came mm -hmm and said, if you don't take down the flag and let us rule over you, um, and you submit to the crown and, you know, the English church and all that and everything, mm -hmm. um, then, we will, then we will kill you and we will persecute you. And as they shot fire, cannon fire, towards this town on the coast, um, this colony where the colonists were, eventually the British directed fire towards the flag and knocked down the flag, mm. but men and women came up and moved the flag up, and they said, mm. we'd rather die, you know, worshiping what we believe than submitting to you. We'd rather die, you know, mm. Mm. serving God the way we want to serve God mm. rather than you say how we have to serve God. Mm. Um, they gladly gave their life for that, and I think that's very beautiful. Mm -hmm. uh, more recent testimony that we see. Yeah, that's awesome. Wow. I, I didn't know about that, so. Yeah. They still stand for their truth. They still stand for God's truth. Yeah. That, uh, yeah. that they were okay even yeah. dying. And that's what actually sparked the major revolution in our country, mm -hmm. you know, and mm -hmm. that's 
Yeah, interesting. Uh, yeah. So moving forward, as we're clo- uh, as we're closing soon, what are some inspiring passages that we could see from Scripture to encourage us to stand firm in Christ, um, even surrounding this apostasy or even with persecution? Yes, in John uh, ten, verse twenty seven and twenty eight. Mm-hmm. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Mm. So I read that sheep, right? And he said that, and I will give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Mm. So I want to be that sheep that will follow him because he here, he knows his sheep. And we as a sheep should know his voice. Mm-hmm. And how do we, how are we able to know his voice? It's yeah. through the truth. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Through God's word. God's we, word. We listen to it. We and understand we'll live. it. Yeah, yes. And will live with us. And he promised eternal life. Yeah, amen. And nobody is going to pluck them out of his hand. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Nathaniel, do you have a scripture? Yeah, I have Revelation 1, chapter Verse 17 to 18. When I saw him, I fell at his feet, though dead. Then he placed his right hand on me and said, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am the living one. I was dead, and now look, I am alive forever and ever. And I hold the keys of death and Hades. Mm. You know, I, I think that's a very comforting verse. Because... Sometimes in life, we're going to face situations that may seem hopeless. Mm -hmm. And it's not easy to always remember God. But I imagine that once we'll all be together up there, we're going to all be remembering how our Savior always had uh, keys over death Mm -hmm. and everything that we had to face Mm -hmm. for a better tomorrow. Yeah, that Christ is still with us even till after death. Yes. Is there is there a verse that you have in mind, David? Or well, Ephesians uh, six ten through thirteen that we see here. Um, mm-hmm. We actually referenced it before uh, Ephesians twelve, but here's the whole thing. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in His mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. Mm -hmm. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, Mm -hmm. against Mm -hmm. the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything, to stand. Mm. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. God has given us that armor to strengthen us and our role is is not of flesh and blood but by principalities. Yeah, he's not just telling us to fight, he's telling us like he'll have our back, we're on his team, Mm -hmm. you know. And um, and I also like that too because something we referenced a little before, it's inspiring us to fight against darkness. Mm. Um, It's it's worth, it's worth fighting for, so. Amen. So, as we close, what are some things that we've learned throughout the whole lesson? Our cliff notes was, uh, David, let's start with you. What is something that you've learned throughout this whole lesson? Okay, well, something we... We go over a lot, you know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, That's true. But just one thing. Mm-hmm. Persecution is inevitable. Mm-hmm. Um, sadly, we see it throughout all of history, present, and it will be here in the future, but... It's okay because there's a joy in serving God, Mm -hmm. you know, because we know the end of the story. It doesn't end with our eternal demise, but rather our um, our eternity with God, Mm. you know, uh, serving God in heaven and enjoying what he has to offer. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Nathaniel, how about you? Well, as mentioned uh, earlier, we, we are not alone. Mm-hmm. We are in God's team, mm-hmm. the winning team. Well, if that's what we choose, hopefully that's what we we'll end up choosing. But it's something that uh, often it's we forget. Mm-hmm. It's easy to forget that we are in God's team because of situations, the hardships. 
But as we can see throughout all these verses and the stories, the apostles, the persecution, the apostasy, God did not abandon them. Mm -hmm. In spite of what, humanly speaking, you could probably say, well, yeah, that was pretty bad. Yeah, mm -hmm. it was. Mm -hmm. But if you see it from God's perspective, which is not always like the easiest thing to do, you will realize soon enough that in the end, it's all going to be worth it. When that's coming, we don't know. When that's going to happen, we don't know. Mm -hmm. But if God is, was willing to die for us, if God was willing to put that on His team, then why, why can't we do the same for Him? Mm. Amen. And did you? Yes. Um, you know, this is a very deep... Um, lesson that we're dealing with and some of them I don't understand some of them it's so deep that I cannot you know go into farther because it's scary mm -hmm. but then I only ask the Holy Spirit to help me and so you know if you really search for truth this is why you search for truth and then God will guide you to all truths mm -hmm. and give you more understanding of what the real truth is it's just submitting to God and, you know, so that the truth will one day set you free. Mm -hmm. Free from bondage, free from the real persecution, and free from the, uh, some disturbance in your mind. And it will give you peace as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Amen. So, really, no matter what you're going through, you can look at all these faithful people that we've mentioned in this lesson, who really stood for God's truth. Um, because there is, um, there's truly a cosmic battle. There really is a great controversy that's happening in the people's lives, even back then, even to today. But God promises us that this will end soon. This battle, this great controversy will end with God as the victor, that He will win victory. Okay. So let's hold on to our faith. Let's stand truth because there will be peace from God, even after death when we see Him again. David, could you please close with a, with a word of prayer? Yes. God, thank you for your word. Thank you for letting us go over this lesson and better understanding what you've taught us and what you want us to understand, Lord. Help us to read over your word more and let this digest with us. Help us to fully understand how you want us to utilize your word and help us to be able to teach others just as the way the apostles taught others in their communities, Lord. Help us be brave for when we do face persecution and let our persecution inspire others just as the apostles did. Thank you for hearing our prayer, Lord, and be with us all. Amen.